welcome everybody to the Musky Sports Network for Coffee with Coaches presented by Jennings Java. I'm Tom Caudill and joining me today is Muskingum Head Wrestling Coach Robert Watson Powell. Coach, welcome to Coffee with Coaches. Thanks for having me. I'm um, glad to be here. I've really enjoyed my time on campus and ready to let the community and the college know a little bit more about myself. Yeah, I love these interviews because that's exactly what we get a chance to do, Robert, is we get a chance to let people get to know you a little bit differently outside the coaching world, also in the coaching world. And thanks to our good partners and friends at Jennings Java um, for sponsoring this show. If you're looking for that fresh coffee roast experience, JenningsJava.com is the place to go. And Daniel Jennings will certainly uh, take care of you. Um, you know, Coach, let's just start it off with talking about where did you grow up at? How did you become involved with wrestling? Yeah, I grew up uh, in Chagrin Falls, Ohio, right outside of the Cleveland area. Went to Kenston High School. Um, wrestling, I didn't really start getting involved in wrestling until seventh grade, uh, so right around 2002, 2003. My father wrestled. My uncles wrestled through high school. Uh, my dad wrestled a year in college out at John Carroll. Um, but for me, it really started in that summer going into seventh grade, right after football season ended. The, the middle school wrestling coach asked me if I was playing football the next season. And I said, yep, planned on it. He goes, are you going to wrestle? And I go, nope, I didn't plan on wrestling. He goes, well, if you want to play for me, you should probably wrestle. So that's kind of how I joined the, the wrestling program. And I found out about 10 years later when I was at Muskingum that that coach actually was a Muskingum alumni. Yeah. So it was a Muskie and, and a former, former alumni of Muskingum that got me into wrestling. And now I'm back here at Muskingum as the head coach. That's awesome. That long magenta line, man, it stretches yeah. out pretty far. Um, so, so, Coach, when, you, when you're going through high school and you're starting to look at colleges, what was it about you came to Muskingum? What was it about Muskingum initially um, that got you hooked? Uh, what really brought me to Muskingum was the distance. Uh, I wanted to go to college. I didn't want to go too far away from home. I wanted to be in state where my parents could you know, drive down. It's about a two-hour drive. They could come watch matches. And I played football my freshman year, so they could come down to, to visit games. And I didn't want to stay too close to home. I had a sister that went – about 45 minutes from home for college and, you know, was home every weekend. I wanted a little bit of independence, but to stay in state and, and go somewhere where I could make new connections, new friends. Um, coming down to Muskegon was great for me because I came down to a school where I didn't know anyone that came here from high school, whereas a lot of guys and, and girls I went to high school with went to Ohio State and OU and Baldwin Wallace and BG and, you know, coming here and kind of reconnecting with, with a new group of people, reestablishing myself as a student and as an athlete, making connections was was something that really drove me to just go out there and be myself and really get a new connection in life. Well, Coach, I remember you here as a wrestler, um, great competitor, also a leader on and off the mat here on our campus. Um, when you think back about your time on the Muskie program here, what are some favorite memories that pop to the top of the head? Um, a lot of memories. My, my best memory that I have for wrestling actually wasn't on a wrestling mat. It, 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 I would say it is when some members of the wrestling program won the flag football championship because that was that year was still when we were doing the tournaments. So we play games every Tuesday, Thursday for like a six week season and then a tournament. And we actually won the championship after a wrestling practice. So, you know how wrestling was back then. You run your two or so miles before practice, practice for about two hours and then go out on the field in the cold in November and then play a game. And we were. I mean, we were a team full of wrestlers that probably our tallest guy was maybe five, seven, five, eight. Um, and then we had some some big guys on the line for us. But that was really something that brought our team together that just gave us some camaraderie outside of the mats and outside of the room that really just, you know, it, it gave us a little bit of light inside of us and really drew us together. I love that because I tell you the one thing I always see is that um, – Students who are part of athletic teams, it's, just, it's another family uh, that you come in here and you get connected with and that stuff that yep. happens outside your sport and, and talking about intramurals. And intramurals are competitive. I mean, I'm telling you, when there's some teams here that, that go at it and oh, yeah. that, that, to hoist up that trophy at the end is it, quite special and something yeah. I, I can see how you remember that. Yeah, pretty intense. You know, Coach, so as you start winding down your, your musky tenure um, as, a, as a student athlete, um, when did you first start thinking like coaching could be a career route for you? Coaching, the decision to coach came pretty early for me. Um, it, it started probably eighth grade, I would say. Um, I had to do a career project of, of what I wanted to do when I got older. Um, every student out of my middle school did an eighth grade career project, and mine was to be a high school coach and, and PE teacher. 
So I had to interview coaches. I had to write practice plans, write lesson plans. And I did that at about 13 years old. And from that day forward, I said, I'm going to college for physical education. Um, I'm going to become a PE teacher. I'm going to coach either wrestling or football, and that's going to be my career path. And towards the end of my career here at Muskingum, I uh, did my student teaching. I coached out at Maysville High School for a season as the assistant wrestling coach and helped out the, the previous head coach here, Coach Montgomery, with the program in my fifth year. And right after that, I, I got a head coaching job at a high school and, and started teaching PE and just realized, like, this is really what I want to do. I wanted to be a part of wrestling. I wanted to help student athletes um, in the wrestling room, just the way coaches have helped me and really pushed me throughout life. And I wanted to be that person for, for a lot of young young men and women. You know, Coach, you mentioned that you started off at the high school uh, high school path. Um, what was it that kind of got you geared towards getting back in the college ranks? What geared me towards getting back into college is I just, I loved wrestling. That That's what it was. When I was coaching high school, um, especially as a PE teacher and full-time teacher, I put a lot of time into being in the wrestling room, working with my wrestlers throughout the day. And I ran a youth program when I was out in Willard, Ohio. And I just put a lot of time and involvement into wrestling. And I said one day, you know, I just want to wrestle full time. I just want to coach wrestling full time. I want to be a part of wrestling full time. I want to get my master's. And, you know, I looked at what do I need to do to coach at the college level? And, you know, I looked at all the head coaching jobs that are opening up and it's master's preferred, you know, coaching experience preferred. So I spent about three years um, constantly applying for graduate assistant positions and assistant coaching positions to get into the college ranks. And uh, it wasn't until about 2017, uh, three years after college, where I got offered the job as a GA at New England College in Henniker, New Hampshire. And I got offered the job, I think, on, I was like July 22nd. By August 10th, I loaded up a U-Haul and I was off to New Hampshire and I spent two years out there as a GA. And I loved every minute of it, and I, I never wanted to leave college coaching. And just it's a it's a different type of connection with the college athletes than it is with high school athletes. Coach, how do you think that your time as a GA at New England College helped you to get where you are today? How does being an assistant coach help you become a head coach? It helped a lot, mainly because of the type of program I was with. Uh, while at New NEC, they had started their program in September of 2016. And I got hired in July of 2017. So the program had been around for less than a year, only one season. So I had the ability to work with a program that was working from the ground up. Um, I helped bring in the first recruiting class. I helped the program with coaching our first scholar All-Americans, our first regional champ and regional placer and, and national qualifier, and really just setting the foundation for what the program would be, um, which I believe is a little bit of a different view and a different avenue of coaching than if I were to go to a program that had been around for 20, 30 years that had previous All-Americans and scholar All-Americans and national qualifiers and had their foundation. So being a part of a program where I was a part of helping build the foundation really set me up for what I did the next four years after that. Um, I took a head coaching job out in Iowa Wesleyan two years after becoming a GA and helped build that program from the ground up. And having that you know, that information and that ability and that experience of working with the program from the ground really prepared me for that. And then, you know, it's kind of prepared me for coming back here to Muskingum. Yeah, that's what we get back to. So you, after Iowa Wesleyan, you go back to New England College as the head coach. And then ultimately, um, kind of late in the fall here, Muskingum's job comes open. What was it that when you first heard about Muskingum's opening attracted you? I'm a muskie. You know, it's it's always it's always a great day to be a muskie. That's really what attracted me. Um, I had spent all the time that I that I did at New England College and Iowa Wesleyan and and working in the college ranks and constantly going through recruiting and, and going to tournaments. I was constantly asking, so where'd you wrestle in college and where are you from? And you know, you give that background. And you go, well, I went to Muskingum. So I say, well, well, where's Muskingum? Well, we're the muskies. We're southeast Ohio, right outside the Ohio West Virginia border. And, constantly explaining where we are and I go if I ever get a chance to go back to Muskingum and just put the muskies back on the map for wrestling I, I'm gonna jump at that opportunity um and it was I mean it, it wasn't the perfect timing to come mid-season but the opportunity happened and and I jumped at it and I wanted to get back here and really get Muskingum back to where where we could be and should be nationally as, as a program I'll tell you, it's great having you back on campus um, and at, at the head of our program. Um, let's take a little turn away here and let's have some fun questions here. Um, okay. When you think about your work, who's influenced you the most on how you approach your work? The biggest influence I've had, 
I, I can't single out one single person. Uh, honestly, I pull so much of how I coach and things that I've learned coaching from so many different coaches that I've been around. Uh, my time at, at NEC, you know, when I got hired as a GA, our previous head coach that I worked under, he was deployed in the military. So he actually wasn't there for the first three months that I was on campus. So I constantly walked around and sat down with the basketball coach and the soccer coach and the volleyball coach and learned different things of coaching from those from those uh, guys and, and women. And then when I got to Iowa Wesley and I did the same thing, I spent time sitting down with every single coach and just learning from them. Different coaches in the region when I was out in New England College recruiting, just just picking coaches' brains and just learning, well, how do you do discipline? How do you recruit? What What's the way you reach out to student athletes, Tom? How do you set different schedules? How just just learning different things that you need to know to be a great college coach. I can't say was all brought to me by one singular person. It's all the different brains within the college world that I've that I've just picked and, and learned things from. That's awesome. Um, how do you like to start your day? Usually, I start my day off with music. Um, if anybody knows me, they know I listen to music about ninety percent of my day. The first thing I do in the morning is. I grab my phone and, and I pick what album I'm going to listen to to get my day started, whether that's, you know, right before I get in the shower, brush my teeth, make my morning tea. But, you know, I always say you should have a tune in your heart and a, a sound in your ear. And I like to start my day off with a with a nice tune. Coach, when you get here to the to the office, uh, what energizes you here at Muskingum for your work? Uh, I already hinted to it a little bit. Um, I know this is coffee with coaches, but I'm a big tea guy. Uh, I really love to drink tea. I think it is my favorite source of caffeine. Um, as, as far as energizing goes, I drink a lot of black teas and green teas and some different flavored and herbal teas, but that's what really energizes me throughout the day. Um, cause I get tea in me, I get ready to go. It pumps me up. And then, you know, I just get to fly off around work and talk to my guys and, and meet coaches and, and get things done. What about outside of work? What is it that you, uh, that gives you the energy? The energy I get outside of work is knowing that I accomplish a lot of things throughout the day. So once I get home and I realize, all right. I reached out to the recruits I wanted to reach out to. I set my timeline for tomorrow. I had a good practice with my guys. That's what gets me through later in the day. Um, if you go home after work and it's like, well, I didn't, I didn't have a great practice today or I didn't get this finished or I didn't actually get a good conversation, that kind of bogs down your mind, bogs down the things that you're doing. So if you have a good day at work and you accomplish the things you want to accomplish, it just pushes you to do the things that you love to do outside of work. Coach, when you think about your uh, coaching tenure at your, and, you know, whether it's at New England College, Iowa Wesleyan, here at Muskingum, or in the high school ranks, what's a work-related accomplishment that you're really proud of? I think my biggest accomplishments that I, that I'm proud of, that I've I've been a part of, I wouldn't say are just on my own, is is the accomplishments of my student athletes, uh, being regional placers and scholar all Americans. Um, that's why we coach. Um, me as a coach, there's nothing that I will ever do that's going to be a great accomplishment. It's the things that those student athletes that I work with do that will be my biggest accomplishments. Because because if I can help a young man or woman achieve something that they work very hard for, that will make me feel great inside. Because I know they're going to pass that knowledge, they're going to pass that type of passion on to others. And that's what really drives me. And those are my biggest accomplishments. Love that answer. I mean, I love it because coaches have such a huge influence on your student athletes and mold and really as a role model, uh, teaching all the life skills that we always hear about and getting them ready for that next step in life. Um, what's something that most people don't know about you? One thing people don't know about me, which is which is kind of strange. I love to drive um, as far as when I travel. So when I was living in New Hampshire, I would come home um, at least once a month or every couple of weeks. And I never flew. I'd always do the 11 hour drive. Love to be in my car. Um, same thing with recruiting. I love to be on the road, just drive and listen to music, get a chance to see the sunset, see the sunrise. I like to do it um, in the morning. So I'm an early riser when I get in the car and, and go. And it's just I feel like it's a very tranquil thing to do just to be on the road, watching the sun, looking in the sky and just preparing your day that way. That's good. Um, what's something that you've seen recently that's made you uh, smile? Uh, the, the thing that I've seen recently that made me smile was this past weekend. Um, I was back home. So this is not wrestling related, but watching my, my three-year-old niece sing her ABCs. Um, that was actually, it, it's just a funny thing because there's a couple letters in there that she mixes up. And if you know little kids, just everything they do that just makes you laugh and smile. And I've got, I mean, I've got eight nieces and nephews that, you know, my phone's filled with pictures and videos. And sometimes if I just need a good smile or a good laugh throughout the day, I'll just watch some videos of them. But working all the time, it's always great when I get a chance to, to see the family and, and really connect with them.
Yeah, Coach, you just mentioned, you know, your, your, your nephews and nieces. Um, when you were a little kid, what did you think you were going to be when you grew up? When I was a kid, I thought I'd be Kenny Lofton when I grew up. Um, and then it turned out I never even played baseball. So <laughs> if that tells you anything about dreams. But when I grew up, I always knew I wanted to be involved with sports. I'd always loved sports from a very young age, playing baseball in the yard with my dad, playing football. Um, I went to some soccer camps and uh, played a little bit of soccer when I was a kid. But I just always loved sports always wanted to be involved with sports and I really didn't know what I would do. I just knew I'd always be involved with sports, whether it was a coach or an athlete, or at one point in time, I thought I would become a sports agent. I don't know why that popped into my head, but somewhere at the end of college, I, was like, I should become a sports agent. Yeah. I tell you, you mentioned Kenny Lofton. I mean, you grew up right there, right in the, the really, I mean, the Indians were on fire during that time yeah. uh, with the lineup they put out there in the field every day and got, you know, Northeast Ohio so energized for baseball. Um, Coach, if we're sitting down with, with some of your friends, um, we're, we're talking, and I asked them to describe you using three words. What words would your friends use? Um, I think one of the biggest words my, most of my friends would use would be reliable. Uh, I try to force myself to be the most reliable person that, that you can have. And you know, if I tell you I'm going to do something, I'm probably going to do it for you, and I'm going to do it when I say I'm going to do it. Um, so loyal, I think loyal, reliable, and then persistent. I'm a very persistent person. I don't give up easily. Uh, it might be one of my downfalls is that I'm too persistent, uh, that I just, I, you know, I put goals for myself and accomplishments that I want, and I'm always working for them. And my friends are always like, you know, you push yourself way too hard. And I go, I know, but no one else is going to do it for me. So I think loyal, reliable, and persistent is probably what they, they'd say for me. Oh, those are great words to use to describe you. Um, what about this? If, we have, if we're talking movies now and, and we're going to make a movie and the movie's going to be focused on your life as Robert Watson Powell, who would you want to see play you? So I thought about that a little bit. Um, I don't know yet. You know, I really hope that my life is, is so full of accomplishment and so long that whoever plays me in the future isn't even born yet. Um, to think about it right now is, is to say an actor that's maybe older than me or, or younger than me, but yeah, I really yeah. hope the person that, that plays me in a movie it hasn't been created yet and it's a soul that is an old soul but a, but a fun guy and, and a hard worker and, and good looking so <laughs> i don't know yet i love that answer that you're still writing your story so let's wait a little while until we do a movie on you um what about this i mean in the time of covid some people kind of you know inside a little bit more don't go outside as much uh if there's one food item that you had to have in your house um your go-to what's your food item uh ooh. That, that that in my head is a tie. My two favorite foods are chicken and broccoli. I think they're the most versatile foods that that there possibly is. You can you can cook them a million different ways, season them, eat them a million different ways. I go broccoli. Broccoli broccoli is like my number one favorite food. If I could just eat, you can eat it cold, you can heat it up, you can boil it, you can grill it, you can I mean, you can you can bake it, you can do anything with broccoli. And it's just delicious. That's a that's, that's awesome. a weird question. I I was a weird kid growing up. I loved vegetables. Um, I still do. So I would say broccoli. I, hey, I like it. It's the first time I've ever heard anyone say broccoli. Um, I like broccoli too. I'm not sure it's my top food, um, but it's a good food. Uh, what about this? You know, we're in a digital age now. Everything seems to be moving towards a mobile, you know, the internet. Uh, what are three apps that you have on your phone that you've got to have? I'd say ESPN, Flow Wrestling, and then the Cleveland Browns app. Um, I, I was a late bloomer to, to the smartphones. Uh, I didn't get my first iPhone until 2018. Nope, summer of 2017 was when I got my first smartphone. And for a while there, I had like maybe 10 apps, and three of them weren't apps that came with the phone. And it was ESPN, Cleveland Browns app, and Flow Wrestling. So I can follow the Browns, follow ESPN, follow sports, and then if I can watch wrestling, I'll be set. Oh, you can't say good three, good three right there. Um, what about a bucket list? I mean, you're a young guy still. Are there some things that you still want to go on there and check off, still want to do? Uh, some things on my bucket list is travel the world. Uh, I've actually, most people think this is weird, but I've, I've never really been out of the country. Um, I think I've been to 32 or 33 states. So I've been around America a lot, but I've never been out of the country. And I love to get to see a couple, couple of more countries and, and just travel a little bit. Coach, do you have a favorite TV show, something that you binge, something you watch? Uh, I don't have any shows that I binge. I don't watch a lot of TV, but I think one of my favorite shows of all time is King of the Hill. It's a show that you know I could constantly watch over and over again. It's just it's very funny, uh, kind of dry humor, and um, 
yeah, I love wrestling the way Hank Hill loves propane. It's kind of what I can say about myself. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, Coach, just turn it back around here to Muskingum. You know, since taking over the program uh, in December, what's been some of your favorite moments so far here at Muskingum? My favorite moment so far is, is just being back on campus, um, is getting a lot of friends and a lot of, you know, previous guys and girls that I went to college with reaching out to me saying how glad they are that I'm back and, you know, getting to see this M every single day and getting to see the face of that muskie um, has been my favorite thing. You know, it's it's been a whirlwind getting back here on campus, you know, taking over a job midseason, a lot of things to uncover, but just being back in the black and red and, and being in that wrestling room every single day and, and getting a chance to walk around campus and really feel, you know, feel like I'm back and feel, you know, just, you know, it's a great day to be a muskie, I, I got to say. is like that's probably my favorite thing, just being back and knowing that, this program and this school is going places and I can be a part of that build. You know, coach season starting to wind down a little bit for the program. Uh, got the NCAA regionals on the horizon. Uh, when you look at the regionals, what are some goals that you have for the team? For the team right now, our biggest goals at regionals is, is to get some W's. Um, you know, you're not going to place at regionals. You're not going to qualify for nationals unless you start winning some matches. Um, and we always think about the next match. The next match is the most important. So when we go into the regional tournament, I'm not a guy that, hey, look at the bracket. You're going to meet up with him in the quarters. You're going to meet down here. Like, let's win this match right now, and then we'll focus on that next match. So that's my biggest goal is I get my guys out there. Once you get that first win under your belt, you can start moving. Um, I love the regional tournament because anything can happen. Um, anything can happen at the regional tournament. Nothing is set in stone. And, you know, we just got to take these next you know couple weeks and really grind and prepare ourselves to, to go out there and do something that, that we're capable of. Coach, when you were going through the interview process here at Muskingum uh, and ultimately uh, got hired here, one of the statements that you said was four for 40. It was like a mantra for you that you use when you talk to recruits. Can you explain what four for 40 means? Yeah, uh, the four for 40 is something that, you know, myself and my and the staff that I work with out at NEC came up with just kind of how we want to build our student athletes and, and what our goal is. The four for 40 is using the next four years of your life to set you up for the next 40. Um, it's being a well-rounded student. It's being a well-rounded athlete. It's making sure that you're doing well in the classroom, doing well on the mat. Um, every student athlete that I recruit and bring in, I say the number one thing that you can accomplish is being a scholar All-American, right? That's making sure that you have that 3.25 or higher cumulative GPA, um, making sure that you're winning at least 67% of your matches, making sure you're placing at the regional tournament or qualifying for nationals. Um, the 4 for 40 is important because when you graduate from school, everything that you do on the mat is going to be great. It is going to be on the wall in our wrestling room. It will be left in the trophy cases here on campus, but it's not necessarily going to get you a job. Um, it's the connections you build with your teachers. It's the connections you build with the organizations you're a part of, whether it's, you know, the international club or it's a sorority or a fraternity, or if you, you know, have a job as a student worker on campus and you build those connections. All that, what you build, it's what's going to take you on to your next step in life. So making sure that you're using these next four years to really prepare yourself for success over the next 40. I mean, I love that. I love that statement. I, I would think that uh, that's got to resonate well with everyone you talk to when you're talking about recruiting. Um, and speaking of recruiting, uh, for student athletes who are looking to take that next step, compete at the college level, uh, what's the best way for them to get a hold of you to learn more about musky wrestling? You know, I'd like to say email because that that's how it was back in the day. But let's be honest, it's 2022. If, if you want to get a hold of a student, if you want to get a hold of a recruiter, you want to get a hold of a coach, it's social media. Um, I'm not the, the biggest poster on social media, but I, I check it as much as I can. And I'm always messaging kids and, you know, they message me back. And, you know, any student athlete out there that wants to be a part of the Muskingum wrestling program, you know, you follow us on Instagram, Twitter. Uh, we have our Facebook now and just reach out. And I've had tons of kids that have reached out and filled out our recruiting questionnaire and, you know, just get your name out there. And, you know, I'll always take the time to talk to any student athlete uh, that wants to be a part of the process of building here. You know, Coach, one, one last item here for you. Uh, Right behind the office area over there, the Steel Center, the Bullock Health and Wellness Complex is, is almost complete, slated to open uh, in the fall. A uh, $30 million complex is going to combine athletics, academics, uh, diagnostic hub for athletic training. So many elements going into that building, including the indoor track, uh, turf on the inside. Uh, how will this program help you in the future when it comes to musky wrestling? 
the center will help us so much. It, it will be a great asset for every sport. It will be a great asset for every single student. I can just think of the nutrition aspect for all of my wrestlers, having the, the wellness center in there, um, making sure those guys are focused on what they're putting into their bodies, what they're getting out of their bodies. Um, I've talked to a lot of student athletes that are looking to come here um, that are kinesiology majors and health science majors and having the classrooms and the academics resources within the wellness center will definitely help with those guys and, and girls that we bring. And I keep saying girls and we don't have a women's program yet, but that's something that, that I hope we have in the next, you know, five, six years. Um, it's really going to help with our student athletes getting a great education and being able to develop and grow. And then the facilities that are inside the weight room, the indoor track, like you said, having a chance to run um, inside, not every wrestler knows that we've all been used to it, running stairs constantly and running around hallways. Now having a track that we can run inside and having that indoor turf and just, you know, expanding the different things that we can do as a program that other schools might not have. Um, and it's taking those things that you have and using them to your advantage. And that's what we're really going to use that facility for. You know, if anybody out there wants more information on this game changer facility going up, just go to muskingum.edu backslash BHWC, get the live cam on it. And also all kinds of information about what this building will have housed in it. Um, again, this is Coffee with Coaches presented by Jennings Java. Uh, if you're looking for that fresh roast experience, make sure to visit JenningsJava.com. Uh, Coach, I want to thank you for taking the time today to sit down here uh, and talk some wrestling with me and give our fans a little bit more detail about who you are as a coach and also outside the coaching world. Thanks for having me. Um, go Muskies, and thanks for having us. And, you know, if you get a chance to watch us throughout the season, please do. And I think we're going to have a great regional tournament, and I'm looking forward to the future. Thanks a lot, Coach, and go Muskies.